That's my friend Lupita. She's like the best. Come on in. You guys can sneak through here. Yeah, how's it going? Well, I started seeing your dad around, so now I know. Let's see here. Zoom. Admit. Admit. Can you guys hear me? Okay, awesome. I'm talking to the Zoom people, but I'm glad you can hear me too. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing if you couldn't. Um, I'm also recording a video of this, and we'll go from there. And we will start punctually at 5.30. Anybody else is here? Da, 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 da. It's like five twenty eight, Michelle. Yeah. This is Michelle Somalia. She she and I co lead the trip. And Michelle taught down on the res for several years. Do you want to say anything about that really quick? Um, I did my student teaching in a little town called Kinyan, which is like 40 minutes west of Chinle. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go to the other side, though. We're going to be like 40 minutes east of Chinle. Yeah, so I've tooled around that area quite a bit, met my husband there, and uh, it's going to be great. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I, um, I worked in what was called a uh, community I taught at the public school, but then I lived at the community school. So in the area, it was so remote that kids would get bused in and, and live at the community school during the week. And um, so there were dorm moms, and there was a cafeteria and stuff. And I got to know the dorm moms really well. And they invited me to ceremonies. And I got to, I herded sheep for a day, and I got to do the Nanashe ceremony. Yeah. Um, so all the people on Zoom, I'm going to start right now. I hope you guys can hear me, and I think you can. Um, if you have any questions later, Zoom folks, you're going to have to email them to me, and we will go from there. What's up, Aiden? Do you have an adult with you? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hi. All right, well, it's 530. We're going to start. Um, basically, like tonight, I'm just going to give you guys like a quick overview of the trip. I could geek out a lot about the trip, but it's just going to be better to like show you the big picture. And then if your kids want to join, which I would highly, highly, highly encourage them to do, um, we've got paperwork liability because we're basically going to the middle of nowhere um, and it's going to be an adventure. But first, I'm going to get you guys really excited. So I'm Mr. Evans um, and I want to show you a bunch of pictures. I'm going to share the screen with the, um, with the Zoom folks. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it. Zoom folks. I can't share the screen right now, but I am recording this separately. So I'm just going to show everybody else this, but you can hear me hopefully. So um, share, cancel. So this right here is Wind Arch. This is Canyon de Shea. This is where we're going. And one of the just amazing things, I happened to meet Lupita McClanahan um, eight years ago when Ridgeway schools, and they still do it, did a rite of passage for the entire eighth grade. They do it every single year. Um, what that means is because their school is much smaller, they just take every single eighth grader and take them out there. And it's like, okay, you're going to high school. It's time to grow up. <laughs> We're gonna put you through some life-changing experiences. And so I started doing these trips then. I don't know how many I've done since. I've become best friends with Lupita. 
And this is one of the amazing hikes that we get to do that all of you guys will get to do if you go on this trip. Um, and then here's what's really, really, really cool. In the Navajo Nation, you're not really allowed to go anywhere unless you have a Navajo guide with you. And even in that context, like if you're a Diné, that's what they call themselves. If you're a Diné person in ancestral land around Monument Valley, you're the only person to take people to Monument Valley. Not, somebody else can't show up and go there. And so this land right here is the McClanahan's um, ancestral land, meaning that like only a couple hundred people from the modern world have ever been here because that's where Lupita takes us on our tours. It's hers, it's really, really special. Um, and it's a great experience for kids to get to like explore something so pristine like this. It's basically like, imagine your own private national park because that's kind of what it is. And so when we go, we're gonna be hiking into the canyon, having big adventures, and then also learning a whole bunch of cultural activities. So one of the things that like Lupita and her relatives do is just teach us about their traditional way of life. This is a traditional Navajo hair tie that if you have long hair, even King, you can do it. They have a, a men and a women's version and they have a married and an unmarried version. Hopefully everybody going is unmarried, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but it, the, rich, the res can also be like this. This picture was taken in May and I'm showing you this picture because it's an adventure. <laughs> no water, no running water, no self-service, no electricity, and sometimes this happens, and I think this is the best thing that could possibly happen to an eighth grader, actually, because this is a community building experience where you really learn what you're made out of. Um, and so even though we can plan all sorts of like really fun things to do, um, there's also the unexpected, and I think that that's part of growing up and part of life and why I think this is an incredible opportunity. So there's Lupita. Um, one of the things that is amazing about this woman is she, I asked her if this is the case. She is one of the only people in North America left who is not taken to the boarding schools as a little, little child. And she was trained by traditional people. And she is still also on her traditional land. That makes her one of the last I guess, true indigenous people because her lineage was unbroken. Um, and she's also one of the most wonderful, kind, giving. Um, she's not resentful of the modern world at all. In fact, she invites people like us to go and, and meet her and see her way of life. And, and I wanna invite you guys to do the same. Um, and so like, she's become a, a great family friend. There she is with like my daughter doing high fives. Like, I just feel great knowing her and, and it's a privilege. Um, and when we get into the canyon, like here I am, and this is just an arrowhead that we found on the ground. We left it there, obviously, but there is no place else in North America that I've been to where you're just walking along and, oh, there's a pottery shard. Oh, there's an arrowhead. You know, I've, I've even been in a ruin in Canyon de Chez where there was clothing and it just blew my mind. It was clothing from a thousand years ago because there haven't been tourists that are just going through and like picking up stuff and putting it in their pocket. So once in a lifetime chance for your kids to go and experience this kind of thing. But I included this picture because this is where we would be camping. This is out at her place called Black Rock. And the best part is this sense of like going and camping and we would do some community service for her and then telling stories by the fire and listening to what she has to say and talking about like what we want to do as we grow up and go to high school. Um, here she is teaching on the rim. Um, that's a picture of like the hike in the canyon. I included this picture because for everybody to go, I want you to know that, I mean, this trail is safe, but I need people to be responsible and I need you to be in shape and I, we aren't inviting anybody who we don't trust or isn't in shape or whatever, but that's just something that I want everybody to be aware of. Hey, you guys, I'm glad you made it. Um, here's another picture of us down in the canyon hiking up to Wind Arch. You guys have seen that before. Um, and there was one other picture that I wanted to show you, just kind of of like the, the land where we're going. Um, it's just called Sheep Camp. And 
what's great is it's essentially just like a dirt lot out in the middle of nowhere. And it's great because kids can't get into trouble because like that's where you're hanging out. There's no place to go. It's super safe. And one of the things that like I, to me is the, the real opportunity is that I have grown up driving through the res and I'm sure you guys have, and you kind of have this feeling of like, roll the windows up, we're gonna just keep on going because there's stuff going on on the res. Um, but out here, it's just the ancestral land. It's the sheep herds, the, the cornfields, and there's nobody there. And it's just like pristine wilderness for kids to like be out there and kind of like start to discover who they are. And then parents, this is another thing that I love, we take away their cell phones and just put them in a bag when we drive out of town and they don't get to use their cell phones again until we drive back into town. And our kids last year told us that that was actually the best part because at first they were like, oh, I'm gonna miss it. And then like after an hour, they were all talking and conversing and like actually having real conversations <laughs> and, and, and touching grass as the kids would say. Um, and so yeah, that's what's going on. It's a four day trip. It's gonna be in May. Um, we are going to miss almost a week of school to go. So it would be from Tuesday to Friday, May 7th through 10th. And I actually have this. This is kind of like the permission slip that we would need from everybody. Um, it's actually one parent each needs one of these. And I wanna just go over like a couple other, like, oh, I already got, got you one. Um, some of the things that are, some of the things that are going to go on is if your student is going to miss a week of school, obviously everybody needs to have their grades up and keep their grades up. With that said, the teachers here and Mr. Sanchez, we all went and talked to the eighth grade team and based on the success of this trip last year and how much kids get out of it. Um, all the eighth grade teachers are totally willing to work with the kids to make sure, or your students, you guys, to make sure that they get the work beforehand. You get it all in, and then we go and we get to spend this week out in the middle of nowhere, and it's awesome. So that shouldn't be any stress, but I wanna emphasize that we're not just doing this instead of doing education. So that's the first thing. Um, then, my notes are over here. <laughs> so education is the first thing. Um, we're going to be doing a community service project in the past. We've done like this fence right here that you see was built by a bunch of kids from Ridgeway and then some kids from Montrose went later and helped finish it. There's things like that. There's lots of projects that we can do. Um, so there's going to be that community service component. Um, and yeah. Other just basic information, I'm almost done with my list and then like we can open this up to like other questions and things, is to go on this trip, it's gonna cost $250 per person. If you have the money, great. If you have, if anybody in here is secretly a millionaire and they could pay for a couple other people's trips, great, that happened last year. Um, we also have sponsorships, so I don't want cost to be prohibitive to anybody, but if you do have the money, I would ask that everybody like, pay it to value it, because it's really awesome. Um, in terms of gear, the, the school district, as well as the rec center, have a whole bunch of camping gear that we can rent out. And we actually rented five sleeping bags and five tents from them last year. They just let us borrow them. So if anybody here doesn't have the proper like camping gear to go, that shouldn't be an issue either. Um, Physical fitness, I mentioned that. You'd be hiking, you'd be out in the woods. It would be an adventure. And it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so that's basically like, bleh, that's all of the, the overall information. Um, we only can bring about 20, 24 kids. And so the thing that I would love from you guys is if your students are interested, I wanna just go over this sheet. The front side of this is just kind of like the legal document that our, um, 
that our, in, our district insurance policy wants us to fill out, which basically says, hey, you understand what your kid's getting into and blah, blah, blah. On the back side, this is the really important information for us because it talks about um, medications because there's some tricky stuff that we've got to do with that. Um, food allergies, um, what gear you need, dietary restrictions. And then the last but not least thing is on the very bottom, one of the things, it's, it has my phone number here. Once you decide, like, if your kid wants to go and you fill this out, you would need to text me your insurance card, your health insurance card. And the reason that I want you to text that to me is, for example, if a student, and it's, thank goodness it has never happened, but if a student did need to go to the hospital, the first thing that they're going to ask for is their insurance card. And I will have a picture of that on my phone, and I can just be like, boom, here you go, and then it's no questions asked. And we get them right in. Um, in terms of safety, what we've all, even though there's no cell service out there, we always bring like an in-reach satellite phone. And so in case of an emergency, we're able to like hit that button. And then also like the national park for Canyon de Chez National Park, the border is right here. And so if there were an emergency, we can call 911, get a hold of the park service. And if it's really bad, we can fly a helicopter in. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I'm just letting you know as parents that those are the possibilities. Um, yeah, I was trying to be fast and brief. Got through everything in 13 minutes. Um, questions for me, or do you want to add anything else? Michelle, Michelle and I are co-leaders. Miss Christensen, who teaches seventh grade, um, she is going to come, and yeah, that's all I got. You guys excited? Ideally, I want this filled out one way or another in one week, okay? If there's any problems with money or any other issues, um, let me know. The reason that I would like this sooner than later is because you guys are lucky enough that you got on the invite list. There were a lot of people that we talked about that we said, sorry, you can't come because of grades or other issues. Um, there are some kids who are still really interested, but you guys are the winners. So um, you get you get first you get first dibs. You see a typo or something? Yeah, sorry, oh, shoot. It's the old dates down in the bottom. Oh no, I got the I got the new dates at top, but the old dates. Yeah, the fourth paragraph at the bottom. Those dates were last year's. Well, I'm gonna have to amend that. I thought I had everything else right. Anyway, we can fix that. Yes, ma'am. And who are all the adults that are going? For sure, Miss um, Somalia, myself, Miss Christensen. I want to invite that guy right there because he has medical experience. Um, I would love, I would love to take parents, but our we're really limited in terms of like how many people we have a permit to take into the canyon. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. But, but what we've done, what we've done every year is we've always tried to find at least one parent who has medical experience. And Mr. Mulkey, what is your? Are you a janitor? Is that your medical experience? Janitor. Yeah. Janitor. Okay. I started as janitor. Yeah. I'm a nurse practitioner. So, um, that's that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, there, the only other adults that your kids and we would all interact with is Lupita's family. Um, and like they're my family essentially just all a whole bunch of Danae happy people that are going to help us make fry bread and braid hair and take us on hikes and so yeah I mean I can't emphasize how isolated this is there there's maybe 500 people from the modern world who've ever been here like it's it's pristine or as pristine as it gets and it's an invite only Oh yeah, we can look at the pretty pictures one more time. So let's, uh, I've got a gazillion pretty pictures, but I just picked out some like favorite ones. Here's walking, here, this is one of the ancestral sheep trails that when Lupita was a kid, at seven years old, she would take her 300 sheep up and down this at 5 a.m. down to water, milk them, come back up. I mean, just the coolest things ever. Um, here's some 
While I'm looking up some other pictures, what's another question that somebody might have? There's the arch that we'd probably hike to, wind arch, so cool. Hiking down into the canyon. The Diné, the Diné braid, <laughs> pushing the stuck bus. Again, I'm gonna emphasize this for some of you guys who get in late. This picture was taken in May. So it's the kind of thing where it's just like Colorado. It was beautiful earlier today and sunny, and then suddenly we got a snowstorm. Um, this can happen. So like you bring shorts, you bring jackets. Once you guys decide that your kids want to come, I've got a detailed packing list of all the things that you need to bring, and we kind of work things out that way. In terms of logistics, what we would do is Monday is the 6th. We would have it, all the kids bring their backpacks and things the, on the day of the 6th, and we do like a double check, just like, okay, show me your hat. Everybody, show me your jacket, show me your shoes. And that way, if anything's missing, we kind of scramble and get it figured you can, out. like set up the tents out here just to mm -hmm. make sure everyone knew how to set up a tent before mm -hmm. we got there. And, and last year there was a tent that wasn't working, and we got another one, but that's okay. Um, we got lots of food. Yes, ma'am. No, we can provide tents and sleeping bags for them. There's just a note on the back here saying I have a tent, check, or I, I need to borrow a tent. So, mm -hmm. Same with sleeping bags. Yep. What up? Um, how long would the trip be like to the lake for them? So we would probably leave at 7 a.m. on the 7th. It's about a five-hour drive to get here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's about a five hour drive one way. We would leave early that Tuesday morning. We would be back on Friday at five at the latest, but I wanna be back even before then because my kids are in Weehawken and your kids, friends, et cetera, are probably in that too. So anyway, we're gonna be, we're gonna be sure we're gonna be back by Friday. To answer, it's about five hours to Sealy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For the tents, um, do they buddy up? Is it just one? Like, how big do the tents need to be? Um, it can be whatever. And so what we'll do is if Aiden says, like, hey, my best friend is this person and we want to just bring our two-person tent, great. Okay. Um, last year, there was a group of, like, five girls who somebody had a big tent and they all just were in it together. So, yeah, we can, we can cross that bridge when we get there, but... Anything else? Well, great. That's all I have. I mean, I just wanted you guys to like know what a cool opportunity this is, know what you were getting into. Mr. Sanchez asked that I have this meeting and I really wanted to see all your faces and, and understand what was going on. What I think I'm gonna do right now, if you can hang out, is I'll print the proper dates on this. Do you think that matters? No. Okay.